So, welcome to the final week of the season, and it's day one of week 13. Most of the races today are en français at Oi Toy, but we start off with two handicap hurdles at Haydock. And the first one is the long distance handicap hurdle. It's a three mile handicap hurdle, and the top rated one there, Consequence of Stars, looks to be in with a chance. My personal selection there will be Fallout Land for David Robertson, Quack for Kevin Meenan. Probably shouldn't be too far away. The second race at Haydock is the Swinton Hurdle. And Sir Usain Bolt for Ball Road is the top rated one here. He's also got Rod Lavering, who will be, who will be getting a good nine pounds from that top rated one. So you might think that Rod Laver's got a better chance of winning that one. One or two in there have got some pretty decent form. And looking down towards the bottom of the handicap, Janice Singh, Samoa Sunrise and Samoa Sabbath all getting... Decent weight allowances should go close. Poor old Princely, though, is £90 out of the... Uh, he's rated £90 inferior to Sir Usain Bolt, so he's a million miles out of the handicap and probably wouldn't win if he started now. Then we'll be over to France. We'll be sampling some of the wine, some of the champagne, some of the pate and some of the cheese, no doubt, throughout the day. And Money Goes Away is the top-rated one for Darren Thompson in that. Eskimo Jane for David Robertson also looks... To be a pretty good sort of horse to himself will think that his love embrace has got a bit of a chance in that as well. That looks wide open and should be a pretty interesting start to the day's racing in France. Then we've got a bit of a disappointing turnout really for the Ferdinand Dufois Novices Chase. It's a two mile five field on grade one event and we've seen quite a few small fields for the three mile novice races this season but this is a two mile five and I thought one or two of the two and a half milers might have had a bit of a crack at this but they don't appear to have done so and there's just the six of them then so only one trainer is going to go Home without a few euros in his pocket. I nearly said francs then, but top rated one there is Chestnut Surprise for Paul Rhodes, who's rated an astronomical 174. We go to race five then, that's the Questra Bad Novices Hurdle, and another small field for this. Only five this time, so everybody will be. Uh, pocketing some euros if they can complete the course the top rated one here is made in arkan made in arkan is mine and i really can't believe that uh, the grade three novices hurdle made in arkan is the top rated horse so a little bit of a surprise there i've got a clue what a win it happens grace for john morgan is the one that immediately springs to mind when you go then to race six which is la barca hurdle over two miles and five furlongs this is a group two and the right stuff is the top rated one here for joshua southern but he's got a far more interesting runner right down towards the bottom of the card with falling through clouds which has been a 156 rated chaser throughout the season hasn't had a single run over hurdle so far and this is its first attempt over the smaller obstacles so i'm quite sure what josh will be thinking about there if that one goes and wins by about six lengths he'll probably be wishing he'd run it over hurdles all season so i'll probably be 50 percent hoping it wins and 50 percent hoping it doesn't in that one we go on then to the grand steeplechase de paris which has got the last two seasons gold cup winners in it the mighty eight for joshua sort of looks like it could be with a bit of a chance that'll be a wide open race though and knowing the way that he enters his horses i would suggest that glenn moss tara for john morgan looks like it might be the one to be on if you're determined to go to the Paris Mutuel window for that race then we go to the stanley juvenile hurdle northern rap for derek hinton looks an interesting one here was a winner last time out dame joanna lumley also runs well but the truth is most of these horses have been racing against each other week in week out and trade wars is quite clearly superior to all of them so as long as he's not having an off day he should win that quite easily you would think the marichal fox listed chase is after that one and another small thing for this one just seven of them but daz moyoon has had a great season hasn't he for darren thompson really good early on then he went through a bit of a bit of a bad patch where he wasn't running well at all but he sprung right back to form the last two weeks and has won two really big races and you would have to be a brave person to uh, bet against him in this one where he's rated 23 pound superior to everybody else in the race it doesn't look like he's uh, got a lot to beat to be honest either so that should be a pretty easy win there for Daz Moyoon and Darren Thompson, you would think. Then we go on to the race 10, which is the pre Alan de Brel Novices Hurdle. This is over two and a half miles to grade one. And once again, it is a pathetically small field, just five of them. 
really does baffle me this week as to where all the where all the horses have gone and, and why nothing's running in these in these big races because as we as we've said so many times before over the the jump racing you only need one to fall or pull up and suddenly it's a wide open race and maybe one or two of the middle rank trainers have missed a bit of a missed a bit of a trick here this week by not going in some of these group races that haven't got too many runners in going back to it though it does look like it's a pretty hot race even though there's only five in a minute uh, me andre from ball roads looks to be the best one in there but you really could make it you could make a good argument for every single one of them having some sort of a chance of taking it pre the drag direct matter which is a group two chase over three miles and once again this one bit of an open race royal molly for john morgan though three runs three wins It'd be a brave person to bet against that one with quite a few of these others beating each other on a regular basis one that really sticks out time to kill for joshua Sutherland does look pretty good at the top and wouldn't be having to give weight away if it was a handicap rated 173 again the final race of day one of the final week of the season is the pre Ardati listed handicap hurdle over two miles and one further we've got quite a bit of field for this one much more sensible sort of size field to be honest, looking at the ratings for that one, Bobby Moore for Derek Hinton will be top of the top of the shop. That frantic Eskimo for David Robertson, that horse that likes to go off lickety split, will surely do the same thing again and could set the race up for one of the closers. Looking at the form, it's very difficult to make out a case for anything as a stone cold certainty in that, and it's pretty much difficult getting out stakes. It's pretty much to pay your money and take your choice and see what happens with that one. I think so. That'll be your day one then of week three and i think stew's all geared up ready for the first race so let's get over and get the racing underway